Sziasztok! Hello, this is the Mass Vlog. In the previous part, we talked about the liturgy of the Word. Today we start on the second main part of the Mass, the liturgy of the Eucharist, also called the sacrifice of the Mass. What is sacrifice? To understand why this is important, we need to go back in time to the chosen people. The Old Testament describes how people of that era faced the problem of sin. They tried to mitigate God's anger and seek his forgiveness by making a sacrifice. They would take an animal, pronounce their sins over its head, and then either chase it off into the wilderness or kill it as a sacrifice. This was the sacrificial animal. At Easter, they sacrificed lambs, this is where the term paschal or sacrificial lamb comes from. But in the book of Hebrews, the biblical author writes that it is impossible for the blood of bulls or goats to take away sins. Such attempts were the forerunners of redemption, in which people tried to make sacrifices to somehow right the wrongs committed. We believe that Jesus died for our sins, and this is why John the Baptist calls him the Lamb of God. He is the only one who actually takes away the sins of the world, and our personal sins too. He does not dredge up old sins, nor does he sweep them under the rug, but he is the only one who is able to take them away completely. On Good Friday, Jesus was crucified and died for us, on the same day that Jews sacrificed the Paschal Lamb on the Feast of Passover. This is why we call Jesus the Lamb of God, a phrase we use in the liturgy. Redemption can be hard to understand. Let me give an example. In ancient times, if someone couldn't pay his debts, he had no choice but to sell himself as a slave. Suppose someone approaches him at the slave market and asks, How much do you owe? If he says he owes 10,000, and the other person hands him this money so he doesn't have to become a slave, then he has been redeemed. Sin is what keeps us captive. But Jesus has wiped out our sin, and this is what we call redemption. He cancelled what we owe and paid off our debts. All sin seeks a remedy. Sins do need to be rectified somehow. The Apostle Paul writes that Jesus took our sins with him onto the cross and hung them there. This way he paid for our sins and wiped away our debt. In his infinite love, God holds us in judgment. He is both infinitely just and infinitely merciful. He knows that our sins deserve to be punished, but Jesus himself bore them in his crucified body. He took on the consequences of our sins instead of us. This is what we call redemption. Jesus took on the burden that we were supposed to pay back. He redeemed us, and this is what we celebrate at every Mass. During the liturgy of the Eucharist, we bring Christ's sacrifice on the cross into the present. We don't repeat the sacrifice, instead we do what he asked at the Last Supper, do this in memory of me. At each Mass, then, we are all at Golgotha, where Jesus was sacrificed, and remember him in a bloodless sacrifice. He becomes present in the Eucharist and feeds us with his body and blood. This is what we celebrate in the liturgy of the Eucharist. Now let's return to the sanctuary and see what is needed to celebrate the Eucharist. In the center is the altar, which can be made of wood, marble, or any other stone or material. The altar is covered with a nice cloth, usually with a missal stand and the missal book itself, from which the priest reads the words of the liturgy. There is also a crucifix, either on the altar or elsewhere in the sanctuary. In addition, there are two more candles on the altar. The number of candles is optional, but I like having two, because they remind me of Jesus' two natures, divine and human, for he is true God and true man. What else do we need for the Eucharist? We need a chalice, which holds the wine, a chalice cloth, a pattern, which is a small plate onto which we place the host, and the pall, which covers the chalice. It's very practical. It keeps insects from falling in. Beneath the chalice is the corporal. This is a small cloth folded in a special way that prevents any small pieces of the host from scattering. We also have the ciborium. The word means container. It contains the consecrated hosts that will be distributed to the faithful during communion. We also need two small decanters, one for water and the other for the wine. 
We needed a pitcher and a bowl and a hand towel. In the Roman Catholic Mass, we use unleavened bread made of flour and water. And wine is a special communion wine. What makes it special? Although wine can be made from a variety of fruits, communion wine must be made from grapes, and after it is fermented, no additional substances may be added. Communion wine may be white or red, but many churches use white wine because it doesn't stain the chalice cloth. Nagyon sok helyen fehér borral miséznek praktikus szempontból, annyiban praktikusabb, hogy nem hagy foltot a kehelytörlő kendőn. In some cases, a priest will use minimally fermented grape juice. The rule is that grape juice must be used. Placid Olofsson, a Hungarian priest who was arrested by communist authorities and deported to the Soviet Union, celebrated mass in the Gulag labor camp by soaking and squeezing a few raisins to make grape juice. For the host, he got some unleavened matzah from a Jewish fellow prisoner. He used his bed as the altar. He and his fellow prisoners drew great strength from this holy mass. They felt that Jesus was with them even in the barracks of the Gulag. That is everything we need to celebrate the Eucharist. In the next part, we will talk about the offertory. A következő részt a felajánlással folytatjuk.